Haha, <laughs> I found it. I've been looking for this thing. It's, a, it's an NVIDIA GT 710, and yeah, I'm a little too excited to have found a 710. Um, but I was talking to a couple of, of you guys in, in the comments, and thank you, by the way, for your suggestions, uh, whether you meant it to be or not. You know, why don't we put this up against an internal journal, or I'm sorry, an integrated GPU, and uh, asked, should we do Ivy Bridge or Haswell, since I already had those things kind of at my ready, and they said, absolutely, Haswell. So that's what we're going to do. We're going to uh, put this up against the Haswell integrated GPU and see what happens. And now I got news for you. I've already done it. This I'm, fil I'm filming this last, and it did wonderfully, even without the fan <laughs> and the, uh, the PCI bracket. I, I don't even know if this is the right heatsink for for this, but I mean it fits. During the benchmarks, running this at 100%, as high as it got was the low 50s. So with the internal um, airflow inside the case was enough to keep this cool. So I'm, I wasn't worried about it, and it really it did fine. Here's the deal: these things we all know. These were not meant to game. These were not meant to be in gaming PCs. These were meant to be in just PCs that needed extra monitors or just a GPU in general. I put this thing in a Core 2 Quad years ago uh, when I needed a second monitor. It only had a, a, a single VGA port on it. I needed a, another monitor um, and it did, it did fine. Since then, it's been in a Plex server, uh, or actually Jellyfin, but whatever, and it's been fine. I'm, and really, it's been headless, so the only thing I've been using it for is its encoding abilities. And is this faster than an integrated GPU, or uh, did Intel kick its butt? Let's find out. Now, I have the 710 running on the same CPU it's competing against. Now, when we look at the specs, both are very different, and it's the old apples and oranges thing. Each are so very different in what they are, and it's hard to compare. So I'm going to stick to the basics. Now, the 710 uses DDR3 RAM, and the HD Graphics uses shared DDR3. Now, as far as the amount of RAM is concerned, the 710 is 2 gigs. In the BIOS, I maxed out the HD Graphics to 1 gig. However, some benchmarks showed it as having 2 gigs, so I'm not sure what's up with that. Now, the HD Graphics has a higher max clock speed and more texture mapping units, but it also uses shared RAM and has far less shading units and ROPs. And I imagine the ROPs is really what's hindering this. Now my understanding is the ROP or the render output unit essentially takes everything the GPU has done for that frame and it rasterizes it or, or renders it into a frame or image. The way I see it is if you have a super efficient assembly line, but the last step is only being done by a couple of very slow individuals, yeah, things are gonna start backing up and you're gonna have a low output. Maybe I'm wrong, and as always, if I am, correct me. First, I wanted to compare the rendering capabilities. The 710 is using NVENC and the HD Graphics is using QSV. Again, both are very different, but they serve the same purpose. And in this situation, the HD Graphics pulled ahead rendering on average 20 FPS faster. Now thinking back, I should have probably saved the file sizes and compared them as well. But I, again, I'm trying to keep this quick and simple. YouTube playback on each was fine. Uh, any dropped frames you see in the stats are just from the video loading and they don't play a part in its actual performance. There were no drop frames after that and both videos played absolutely perfectly. The HD graphics kicked the 710's butt in heaven, rendering about 12 FPS higher on average. Also notice how it shows the HD graphics as having one gig of RAM. Well, just wait. In superposition, it was the same story. The HD graphics once again pulled ahead, but you'll notice it shows the HD graphics as having two gigs of RAM this time. Now the 710 in Unreal Tournament once again fell behind, but this time only by a little bit. In Crisis Remastered, the 710 pulled ahead. However, as you can see, the Intel side has some missing textures. And I wonder if it had more RAM, would it have rendered faster? Or would those extra textures that wouldn't be missing actually wind up slowing it down? Another older game, Need for Speed Most Wanted, performed better on the 710, but again, just barely. Since I included Raft in the last video, I'll put it here too. Um, 
yeah, both unplayable. And if you want a winner, well, it's the Intel, but barely by just one FPS. All right, let's do the GTA run now. San Andreas, well, this was weird. The Nvidia had a higher average FPS, but the Intel felt better. Um, playing on the 710 was okay, just I noticed far more input lag than on Intel's HD graphics. GTA 4, as usual, here are the settings that I use. Now you can see both have very similar frame rates, but the 710, the input lag was unbelievable. Since we are nowhere near 60 FPS, I let the benchmark run. Both perform about the same. I'm not sure how much I trust these stats, to be honest, um, but let's for a moment believe it. Again, the RAM thing has me confused. If the HD graphics only has one gig of RAM, then how is GTA 4 using less video memory on that than a card that has two gigs? In GTA 5, things just got worse. Usually GTA 5 kind of makes everything all better due to its much more forgiving game engine, but not this time. The 710 on average rendered about half the frame rate as the HD graphics and the input lag, it, it was unbearable. I couldn't even ride around without crashing into things constantly. Now here's the last scene of the benchmark and you'll see the 710 runs about half the speed. And Portal 2, once again, 710 fell far behind. So the results are pretty mixed, however, if I had to choose one, I'd take Intel's integrated HD graphics. Even on games where it fell behind, it just felt better to play. Now I did some quick research into the RAM question, and I gave up pretty quickly. Everything I read seemed to contradict everything else. It's as if they didn't know what they were talking about either. In my situation, the bias allowed only one gig of RAM to be allocated to the GPU, and I'm running 16 gigs of total RAM. Now I know someone's going to bring up overclocking. Here's the thing, I have overclocked the 710 in the past, and I found little to no benefit. Um, no benefit as in a 2 FPS improvement with it pushed to its limits and locking up. Um, I don't remember what speeds I overclocked it to, it was a while back, but I know I overclocked the GPU in memory and really got pretty much nothing in return. I've heard stories where people say these things really come alive with overclocking. Well, maybe with newer GDDR5 models, but with the older ones, no. Well, I tried to keep this as quick as possible. Uh, again, thank you for the, uh, the ideas, and um, I'll see you next time. Bye-bye.